balance between longevity and urgency. And I think this parable sets us up really well for this conversation about what does it look like for us to give everything for Jesus, but also to wisely make sure that what we're giving um, is going to last, should the Lord decide to tarry. Hey guys, welcome back to the first 2024 edition of the H3X podcast, where we discuss the head, heart, and hands of the multiplying church and our leaders. Today, Mark Gearing in New York and me in Oklahoma City, Dave Miller, are dropping back and asking, okay, what is 2024 going to be about? And in this kind of first New Year's edition, we wanted to really go back to the heart of what is it that we're after with the H3X podcast and to talk about uh, something that's very near and dear to our hearts, which is not only developing leaders, but also developing leaders that last. What does longevity look like and how do we make sure that we continue to run the course faithfully uh, until the very end of the finish line. And the parable that really came to mind for us as we were kind of kicking things around before we hit record was Matthew 25. And Jesus said, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take oil with them, but the wise ones took oil in their flasks with their lamps. When the groom was delayed, they became drowsy and they fell asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a shout, here's the groom, come out to meet him. And all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. The wise ones answered, no, there won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. When they'd gone to buy some, the groom arrived and those who were ready went in with him and the, to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins also came and said, Master, Master, open up for us. And he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert, because you don't know either the day or the hour. Um, I think, Mark, to kick off our discussion today, I want to just lean into what does longevity look like? And uh, we're always on the radical middle, so why not kick 2024 off right smack dab in the middle of that, which is the balance between longevity and urgency. And I think this parable sets us up really well for this conversation about what does it look like for us to give everything for Jesus, but also to wisely make sure that what we're giving um, is going to last, should the Lord decide to tarry. Well, yeah, you set it up in an intense way. I, and uh, we talked about the parable before we hit record, but that that uh, that parable is in the middle of this idea of the, I mean, it's the Lord Jesus is coming into Jerusalem for the first time, and then he's talking about the, the time that he'll return um, but the context is the Lord's return, which is, which is the, the, the essence of the radical middle, right? That, uh, we're to long for the Lord's return because, uh, first of all, because I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's the coming King that's going to put everything right. Um, and things are not right until he comes, but, um, but that's, that's what he puts us here to do is to, to be a part of seeing that kingdom come into the now. And so we're to work now, but then also to long for the day that he's going to fully come back. And so we just celebrated Christmas and that's what our family did was uh, celebrate the first coming of Jesus. But also we were just talking through and processing through, man, he's going to come back. Um, and how do we continue to keep our heart in that place of longing? Um, and when I, when I think of this parable, uh, and that tension, Dave, is uh, he the the, uh, the there to wait for him, um, and there is a burning of the lamps. That's a piece of that. Um, so it's I guess the 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 tension I see even in this parable is it's like it's not do you burn do you do you uh, engage in the work uh, or not because they all are. It's about the the extra oil is part of the tension. So. Um, it's not do it or don't do it. It's the way in which we're called to do it. Is that uh, close to what you're getting out of it? Well, and I would say if we were to uh, apply this this concept you're talking about, especially to leadership, um, it's very easy to watch leaders burn up, burn out. Um, yeah. And they can do uh, really two ways. One of them is, is if, if you if you burn out, you work so hard that you don't pace yourself. You put too much burden on your own shoulders. Um, you take on too much responsibility uh, or you try to commandeer the strategy from the master strategist, Jesus. Um, and you don't, you don't walk 
in a wise way with the extra oil, uh, you burn up your lamp, you, you, you flame out. And then when you run out right. of oil, you, you turn around and right, you don't have any that that's left and you might do it under the banner of I'm passionate, but passion is something that doesn't have to be burned up and used up. Passion can be something that can be cultivated for all of life. When I think about this, this uh, parable, that last verse in there, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour that's jumping out to me. And I think um, it, this parable, it also draws the other, other passage that it brings up for me is Matthew seven, where Jesus at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, he, he, um, he's exhorting his listeners uh, to that, that there will be those that will come before him and they will say, Lord, Lord, did I not, uh, cast out demons and and do these mighty works um, in your name. And he'll say, I didn't know you. And then the same thing is true in this Matthew 25 parable. He's saying, get away. I do not know you. Um, therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. There's this call to live um, in, a, in a state of anticipation of the Lord's return. But then also, and, and that should drive the way in which I'm living day to day. But there's a warning in there in both of those because I can I can work and burn for the Lord. Matthew seven gives some examples of that, or I can be one of these foolish virgins in this parable, and and I can think I'm doing all this great stuff, but He doesn't know either one of those groups of people, um, and so there's a warning there that uh, to burn for Him is not wrong or bad. In fact, that's the wise ones are doing that as well. But there is a, uh, and they they're bringing along extra oil. There's a like component to that where they are, uh, uh, they're storing up the oil of, uh, of intimacy of staying connected, uh, with their king in the midst of that. And so that's the, that's the warning or the exhortation I take away from this. That it's not wrong or bad. In fact, it's it's commanded and a part of our. Uh, our stewardship to be burning for the kingdom and stewarding the kingdom, but we've got to do it in a way that is um, living before the eyes of the Lord and staying connected to him. And I would echo that to say, if we want to see leaders that last, if we want to see true longevity, we have to understand that our primary call is not the great commission. Our primary yeah. call is to know him. Yeah. And in knowing him, the call of the great commission comes through that. And so, um, I like one of the ways I like to boil down the book of Ephesians is Paul basically says our call is to know him and to make him known. We're going to we're going to make him known. Um, if we know him, we're going to make him known. And that, I think, is the real um, secret sauce of longevity and the real secret sauce of a leader who lasts is knowing Christ, that that is first and foremost, my abiding relationship, my intimate relationship um, with the king is primary, foremost, cannot be done away with, cannot be dispensed, it can't be replaced, it can't be added to or taken away. Like it is the way in which we um, live out a life and have what is necessary through the power of the Holy Spirit to do what he's calling us to do. And so um, oftentimes I think what happens is because we're especially Westerners, we're very task oriented. We take right. the tasks of Jesus and we go do them. And then we come back and we say, Hey, look, Jesus, everything that I've done for you. And that's not, that's not what he's asking. He's asking us to know him. He wants to know us. And in doing so in that relationship, he's going to ask of us to then participate in his mission and what he, the master strategist is doing. And anytime we flip flop those two, we're going to burn up or we're going to burn out. And I think one of the things that I would add to what you just even said about the ones who came with oil is on the flip side, we may be passionate and burn our wicks out because we run out of oil. But on the other side is when that, when that runs to an end, when that passion reaches a point at which it can't sustain itself anymore. One way is that people quit bow out or they have to take uh, a hiatus to kind of get their gears and their bearings back. But the other right. is um, we will see moral failures. We'll see self-destructive behaviors 
we'll see um, people whose true colors really come out because instead of knowing the king, they're doing things for the king. And he's going to say, I don't know you because everything that they're doing is really self-centered instead of Christ-centered because it's yeah. about what they're doing, not about what Christ uh, is asking them to do. And, you know, I've been reading first, second, and third John uh, a whole bunch this month. And one of the things that he says is that we'll know them because uh, they go out from us because they were never among us. And that the love for one another and the love for Christ is really the, the defining factor by how we know those who are false and those who are true. And John just repeats that over and over and over. Do you love Christ? He loves you. Do you love your brother? Because Christ loves your brother and Christ taught you how to love your brother. So you should love one another and you should love Christ. And that's that's how he constantly comes back and says, this is where it all comes down to. And so Jesus says, right, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And I think we would do well um, as we go into 2024 to think and be mindful of the love of God and the love of brother and neighbor is still primary, especially if we want to be leaders who are going to do the work over the long haul so that we've got the extra oil when we're ready to trim our lamps. Well, dude, I feel like there's a lot in there that I could respond to, uh, but I think I have to respond like personally. The last uh, one of the last times that we talked in this format, uh, we talked, you, you brought up first Peter five, we were talking through um, the, uh, the place of is is there such a thing as godly ambition? And um, I think one of the things God's been bringing up for me in the last month or two is a lot of repentance around my own ambition and ideas of the things that I'm going to do for him. And um, I think that is how that has expressed itself in my life, the idea of taking the Great Commission and elevating it to ultimate over other other commands or the things that the Lord has called us to do. Um, it, it, uh, manifests in this, uh, ungodly ambition that I, that God has put his finger on. And so one of the, uh, the ways that the Lord is speaking to me in a redemptive way about that in this season has, and I told you this before we were hit and record is second Corinthians or second Chronicles, sorry, 16, nine. Um, I'll read it. It says for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those who whose heart is blameless toward him. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. Well, my my heart is not blameless toward the Lord apart from Jesus, um, but this what this stirs up for me is uh, this idea of living before the eyes of Christ. And uh, so that as I move into 2024, um, I usually get really fired up with like um, ambitious, specific goals. And I, and I like right now I'm processing through some really specific things. So we've talked about on our podcast a lot of times trying to uh, use the idea of CFC and getting really focused and how do you lead a team around that and identify a milestone. And I'm processing through those things. But I feel this uh, the Lord like pulling the reins and calling me up short to say um, in all of that live before my eyes um think about it just even as practically specifically as the eyes of the lord are uh, i'm recording this in our kitchen as with my tiny new little desk in our apartment of like the eyes of the lord are watching me right now um even as i'm talking with dave the, the eyes of the lord are watching me what does it mean for me to uh interact with dave before the eyes of the lord what does it mean as i'm approaching the new year to approach it before the eyes of the Lord. And so I think that is another way of saying what you're saying of uh, the Matthew uh, uh, 22 verse of love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and your neighbor as yourself is um, I want to come back to that call um, to start this year. That's my conviction of Lord, I want to live before your eyes in a singular devotion to you and all that I do. And one of the driving kind of pieces behind why we're having this conversation today is um, we're about to embark on another year, which meant that the Lord tarried in 2023. He didn't return. Right. Um, and in the same vein, I've been reading first and second Peter. And he says in the last days, there's going to be scoffers who are going to say, he said he was going to come back and look, he hasn't come back. And Peter's answer to that is, 
um, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day for the Lord. In other words, he's going to come on his timetable in his ways and in his patterns. And our responsibility is to trust in his very great and precious promises and add to our faith, um, you know, goodness into goodness, brotherly kindness, good. our kindness and brotherly affection and to affection. We're supposed to add to it endurance. And, and he just keeps going down the line. Yes. <clears throat> and the promises, the promises are what we cling to. Because the promises are what are going to keep us passionate and keep us going. And as we go into 2024, we're saying we've now gone 2023 years, give or take, where the Lord has not returned. And right. so in 2024, how do we go through this year living in such a way that we should say, should the Lord return this year, I'll be ready and he will find me working. But if we come to 2025, and the Lord has still not returned, how he will he then still see me working and still see me be ready? And going back to what you just said, Mark, I think one really important piece for us to bring up is the church waffle um, is not just something that we use to say, hey, what's a church? But it's also a good metric for us to understand what are the core functions that were taught by the apostles that were given to the early yeah. church in order to see them through hard times and good times and bad times to follow the Lord and to be taught and trained how to be the virgins who have oil ready in their lamps and are ready for when when the when the bridegroom arrives. And those primary functions of the gospel of us repenting it constantly and believing. Yeah. Right. The primary walking in the identity that Christ has given us of his own walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, spending time in the word and being just washed with the water of the word and just hearing it, listening to it, being in community, loving one another. Remembering the Lord's death until he comes with a mind of what he has done and a mind of what he will do. Mm -hmm. And then spending time in prayer and that intimate relationship with the Lord as we expect the Lord to do greater things than what he even did in, in and through our lives. And mm -hmm. then we spend time being generous to one another, giving as necessary while we wait mm -hmm. and praising and worshiping for who he is and what he's yeah. done, knowing that in eternity, that's what we'll still be doing. And we know that until then, the Lord will add to the number daily, those who are being saved. And our job is to be that person. It's the Lord's job to produce and to add to our numbers daily, those who are being saved. And so I really think it comes back to in 2024, since the Lord has tarried, what do we do this year? The same thing we did last year, and that is yes. know him more and make him known as much as possible. And if we do that on a, on a consistent CFC pace, we don't get ahead of ourselves. We don't get behind ourselves. We don't take on more than what we should. And we listen to the Lord and we just pace ourselves and just are faithful. We don't have to save the world tomorrow. The church is going to, the church is going to be used to save the world, not just me, us together. Yeah. But if we stay on pace and we stay focused, we stay faithful, then should the Lord tarry in 2025, we'll still be waiting and ready. Yeah. Well, I know you're landing the plane, Dave, so this is interrupting your flow, but I just have to say one last thing. I think, no. uh, I think there's a, launch uh, again. I think there's a, uh, there's a, there's an ingredient in there that I personally feel super convicted by right now. And I just want to put this out to y'all, anybody listening sure. that this may yeah. speak to as well, but there is a, a humility that comes from a fear of the Lord. Um, that's, that is a, a secret ingredient in that sauce um, that I think those disciples had in Acts 2. And some of it was born of the fact that they just crucified. Uh, they just figured out, that, oh, they, we crucified the Messiah. Oh, man. And, and so there, but there was a fear of the Lord of uh, that that God was at work and he was among them. and He was doing these things and um, and that they were living before his eyes that I think comes out in that Second Chronicles passage. And so I am I am wholeheartedly in agreement. I think that is what it looks like as we move into this next year. We've got to be about the work and about those simple things. Um, and just from the posture of that place of uh, the Lord is God and we are living before his eyes. Um, and we need to please our king in how we go about doing that. That's a way better landing place than mine. 
listening, for watching. If this content has been helpful, this content has been helpful for you, please take a minute to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It really helps us to get this content out there farther to serve Jesus, grow his kingdom, and accomplish the Great Commission until there is no place left. Much love to you guys. See you next time.